In this tutorial, I'll show you how this abstract art was created in 11 minutes. This is how the final render scene looked like in viewport shading preview mode. There are six meshes in total, and five of them were originated from one mesh that was duplicated and rotated. Only the original mesh had the array modifier applied to give an illusion of being different from the rest. The render camera was angled from the top. I didn't decrease the focal length in the scene, but the scene would also look nice with that. This cool looking mesh was originated from a single mesh that looks like this. This mesh looks like a usual curve spiral, but it's angled sharp on the edges. The mesh was solidified, stretched, twisted, and arrayed. I'll go over the detailed settings later. This array modifier is using an empty object as its object offset. The empty object was moved, rotated, and scaled to create the expanding mesh illusion. I'll show you how this original mesh was created. Let's create a cube, type, G, Z, and, 1, to align its bottom face with the world center. Let's move the origin to the 3D cursor, S, and, Z, to scale on the, Z, axis. Let's add a curve spiral. If you don't see the curve spiral, please activate an add-on called Extra Objects. We need the spiral to look like it's coiling and move upward on the cube. Let's bevel the curve and use it as the Boolean source object. All curve objects must be converted to mesh before they can be used as the Boolean source objects. If we don't convert them to mesh, we can't use them. Right click the spiral and convert to mesh. This is how the original mesh was created. Before we could extract the result mesh, we must apply the modifier first. In edit mode, I'll hover the cursor over and type L to link select the old spiral mesh in face select mode. Let's deleted the old spiral mesh faces. This is how the original mesh was created. If your boolean was resulted in a cube, instead of a spiral, please go to edit mode and link select the faces inside the cube.
I would press Ctrl I to invert the selection to remove the rest. I'm only mentioning this because I had the box result on my practice run, but on this second run, I had the spiral result. I'll show you the modifier settings in detail. 0.025 for solidify modifier's thickness. 0.785 for the simple deform modifier stretch on the X axis. Three hundred sixty degrees for the simple deform modifiers twist on the Z axis. Five total arrays for the array modifier with object offset pointing to an empty object. The empty object's Z location is set to minus two point nine seven. Z rotation is set to twenty nine point nine, and Z scale is set to minus twenty one point seven one. For the four more meshes in the scene, I have only applied three modifiers for each, and duplicated them and rotated them like this. Shift D to duplicate, and R to rotate in the front viewport. On the top viewport, S to scale, Shift D to duplicate, and R to rotate. Then I added the ground plane. Please find the best camera angle to render. For the environment, I have used the Easy HDRI add-on. I'll share the tutorial link in the description below. I have put the sun and the sky strength to 2, and used a random HDRI image I had. I'll share that HDRI image's download link as well. Easy HDRI add-on creates a complex world nodes like this in the background. I'll show you how the materials were added to the meshes. This is the materials used on the original mesh, and I have only changed the base color for the rest. Please experiment with various HDRI image files, to get the best looking result. As we can see, the scene's lighting changes drastically when we replace the HDRI.
The one I have used to render the scene was Comfy Cafe, and I'll share the file's download location in the description below. Here are my denoise settings. I have used 128 samples to render the scene. This is the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching.